Um, just to let you know, we are streaming this event live on our YouTube channel. You need to have this information that we are live now. Hopefully we are. Start. <laughs> Dear everyone, my name is uh, Ole Mysun. I am the director of the Norwegian Polar Institute, and it is a pleasure for me to welcome you to the heart uh, of the Fram Center here in uh, Tromsø and this uh, press conference uh, regarding uh, the mosaic uh, program of the Alfred Wegener Institute in uh, Germany, to which we have very close uh, relations. The Fram Center, uh, where you are now, um, is uh, a storehouse of uh, knowledge and uh, research. There are employees here of more than 20 ins institutions. We are about 500 people working here. Uh, we do um, um, much interdisciplinary uh, research, advisement, environmental management, and dissemination of what we are doing uh, also. The research topics carried out span ecotoxins to ocean acidification technology and the effects of climate change on society and the environment uh, within a framework of the natural and social sciences and technology in the DNO. Speaking of the north, uh, today the German uh, uh, research icebreaker Polarstern set sail from Tromsø to spend uh, uh, a year trapped in the sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. Four years ago we did something similar with our Lance in a smaller scale, of course. Uh, she was uh, um, uh, in the ice for uh, six months and uh, drifted uh, uh, quite far. There are common goals uh, to the uh, two expeditions to take a closer look at the Arctic in terms of uh, global warming and to seek a better understanding of the mechanisms behind global change. We are a part of one of the projects, the Havok program, which focuses on sea ice, ridges and ice pack. We wish you a warm welcome and uh, the best of luck and I have it handed over to Katarina. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mieson, for your warm welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to welcome you all here at the press conference for the kickoff of Mosaic, the largest Arctic research expedition ever. Many of you had a chance to visit the icebreaker Polarstern in this morning, and I hope that you have had a great, informative, and really successful day so far. My name is Katharina Weistruder. I am the communications manager for the Mosaic expedition at the Alfred Wegener Institute, which leads this international endeavor. To get started, let me briefly take you through the agenda. Um, first, we will hear short introductions of five key participants, namely Professor Markus Rex, he is expedition leader and head of Mosaic from the Alfred Wegener Institute. Um, to his left is Dr. Matthew Schub. He is co-coordinator <laughs> of Mosaic. Um, research scientist from the Cooperative Institute for Research in Environmental Sciences at the University of Colorado and NOAA in Boulder, Colorado, USA. To their right is Professor Pauline Sneers Leonmalm, Professor of Marine Ecology at the University of Stockholm. And to their left again is Vlad Dr. Vladimir Sokolov, Head of the Department of High Latitudinal Arctic Expeditions at the Russian Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute and co cruise leader on the support vessel Academic Fyodorov. And of course, to my right, um, to their right, Stefan Schwarze, captain of the research vessel Polarstern, who will be on board for full six months during the first half of the expedition. Seven. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> it's even longer. <laughs> it's quite long. Okay. Mm. After their statements, we will have a Q&A section where the panelists will take your questions. 
And finally, at around two o'clock, there will be the opportunity to have individual conversations and conduct interviews not only with the panelists, but also with the guests in our audience. And let me therefore also introduce to you the following participants of Mosaic. Mm. Professor um, Katharina Abrahamson, thank you. She's professor of marine chemistry at the University of Gothenburg. Dr. Stephanie Arndt, sea ice physicist at Alfred Wegener Institute. Um, professor Ian Brooks, professor of boundary layer processes at the University of Leeds. Professor Yari Hapala, expert in sea ice and research professor at the Finnish Meteorological Institute. Professor Rui Boulay, professor at the um, Polar Institute of China, sea ice expert. Dr. Marcel Nikolaus, sea ice expert at the Alfred Wegener Institute. And Dr. Julia Schmale, expert for aerosol research at the Paul Scherer Institute in Switzerland. And we also have um, guests from different international funding agencies here in the audience who are happy to talk to you later. Mm, and these guests are um, Dan Block, he's policy officer at the Dutch Research Council. Thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> um, Dr. Gary Giernard, <laughs> director of the Climate and Environmental Sciences Division of the US Department of Energy. And Jon Berne Erbeck, Special Advisor of the Research Council of Norway. Mm, now, Professor Rex, would you be so kind as to start with your presentation? And I think your video is also ready. Yes, I think uh, to just get into a relaxed atmosphere and see some nice pictures uh, from the Arctic, certainly not from this expedition, but uh, from similar previous expeditions, we just start with our trailer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's happening. Uh, it's really happening. Uh, the largest Arctic research expedition of our time, actually the largest uh, Arctic research expedition that has ever been carried out is about to start. It's really a, a dream coming true. And I must say it still feels a bit unreal that uh, we are going to leave tonight in just a few hours. We'll leave land behind uh, and we'll be at sea, finally, after so many years uh, of uh, hard uh, and intense work to make that all happen. Um, it feels good that we are at this point. It will be a major milestone when we leave land tonight. 
And uh, soon after uh, we have left from here, uh, we'll say goodbye to the sun and the long months of the polar night are going to start. Uh, we will work in complete darkness on the drifting ice close to the North Pole. We will encounter pretty fierce storms, which every once in a while uh, occur in that latitude. So the temperatures uh, will be uh, below 40 degrees Celsius, sometimes below 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, and we will be isolated with the next human being more than 1,000 kilometers away. Um, we will go certainly through tough situations. Many aspects of the expeditions are unpredictable. We don't know where we are going to be in a year from now. And although we have done everything to minimize risks, um, we will still be uh, isolated and away from help uh, and from the next uh, hospital. Um, we are still looking forward to that. Uh, we are looking forward to it so much we can't wait to get there uh, to do the research that is so urgently needed to understand the Arctic climate system better. Um, we are looking forward to get to this stunning and fascinating Arctic, uh, to get back to that Arctic uh, for many of us. Uh, the region uh, that uh, kept us, uh, which infected us with the polar virus, uh, many of us many years ago and ever since we want to go back. And we are now on track to go back, uh, and this time in winter. Um, we as polar researchers, for us it is important to protect that fascinating environment, to protect it, uh, to make sure the following generations will still see the sea ice that uh, we are going to research up there. And that is one of our main goals of uh, what we are doing. Never before a modern research icebreaker has ventured out to the inhospitable central Arctic in winter. Uh, in summer, icebreakers have been there, not in winter, uh, where the ice is so thick that we uh, will be locked in the ice. We can't break it and we will just drift with it, uh, going where the ice is going, no matter where this will be. And we'll be in the hands of uh, nature, driven by the forces of wind and ice, um, for better or worse. Uh, no one knows uh, where, we, where this uh, drift will take us. We think, we hope, we'll go towards the farm straight so that uh, in one year we'll uh, be get out of the ice again and return happily and safely to Bremerhaven. Um, but we do know we will bring back the data that is so urgently needed to understand uh, the future of our climate. Mosaic will be the largest research expedition uh, ever with one full year operation of our flagship, the Polar Stern, in the Central Arctic, close to the North Pole. During that year, uh, the Polar Stern will be supported by our partner icebreakers, four partner icebreakers, uh, the Russian academic Fedorov, which is already in port and you can see it there, um, the uh, Russian Kapitän Dranitsin, the Swedish Oden, and also the very modern and new Chinese uh, Xulong too a new addition to the fleet of international research icebreakers. And that uh, already shows us Mosaic is a truly international effort. It is led by Arvi, uh, but it has really key contributions and it wouldn't work without the international contributions from more than 70 scientific institutions from 19 nations overall involved in the project. And it is fascinating to see how all these nations work so closely and uh, so efficiently together to carry out the research uh, that is so urgently needed to understand the Arctic climate system. Overall, during the different phases of the expedition, we will have 600 people in the Central Arctic, uh, and uh, we have an overall budget of uh, roughly 140 million euros. These numbers uh, give you a flavor of the scale of the operation uh, that we have planned, and it also uh, this is the basis for the statement that this is the largest Arctic research expedition ever. So, soon we will see the land disappearing behind us. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, then we'll sail through the Northeast Passage uh, along the Siberian coast, uh, very close to Novaya Samaria. Um, it is mostly free of ice right now, and we hope to make good progress uh, to about uh, 135 degrees east. Um, <coughs> and there we'll set course to north and we'll head into the ice. We will work our way through the ice, which now in summer is thin so that we can break it. Uh, to about 85 degrees north and look for a good home for the next year. Uh, that will be a crucial early decision in the expedition to find our home for the next year. It has to be stable, it has to, be a, has to have a variety of ice conditions so that we can study them all. Then we switch our engines into idle. We don't switch them off, we want to have heat, we want to have power. Actually, we need huge power for uh, some of these instruments. Um, but then, with the engines in idle, we let us freeze in. 
uh, in an exciting competition with the onset of the polar night, which will give us about 10 days, maybe 14 days before it will get completely dark. We will build our research camp on the ice next to Polarstern. Uh, it will look like a little research cities, a city with different neighborhoods, Met City, Ocean City, Oco City, different sampling sites for the different disciplines. It's a fairly complicated setup that we plan there. And during that time, our partner icebreaker, the academic Fyodorov, is going to set up uh, further research stations, a network of research, research stations on the ice up to uh, several dozen uh, kilometers away from Polarstern. And these uh, stations we are going to visit uh, regularly during the winter with our helicopters uh, from our home base at Polarstern. The whole setup, the central op expedition vessel with the network of stations surrounding it will then drift through the central Arctic somewhere along the track, which you can see here, certainly not uh, along that uh, precise track, and will reach uh, the Atlantic sector of the Arctic one year later. We will come fairly close to the North Pole, um, and during that year, the sea ice is going to grow in winter and then shrink in the next summer again. After one year, we will reach the Fram Strait, the body of open water between Greenland and Svalbard, and just sail back to Bremerhaven. During the first and the last phases of the expedition, we will be supported by operations of our partner icebreaker. The uh, icebreakers uh, during those times can break the ice, they can reach us, they can bring us uh, supplies, and they can bring us some fresh salad, which everybody on board will certainly enjoy. And uh, then in spring, when the ice is too thick uh, for the icebreakers to, to reach, uh, to get to us, we will uh, construct a runway on the ice so that with our research and logistical support uh, aircraft, we can go there. And with this refueling station near the North Pole, our research aircraft uh, will for the first time have uh, really significant and long flight times in the Central Arctic uh, because they can just land there and refuel and just take off for another research flight. Why are we doing that? The Arctic is the epicenter of global warming. It is the part of our planet uh, which uh, warms most rapidly where the warming rates are at least twice the global average. And uh, it's also the part uh, of our planet <coughs> excuse me, where, the, where we do not understand the climate system very well. Uh, in this uh, region, um, the, our climate models have the largest uncertainties, and actually they are very large, they are huge, the uncertainties of uh, climate predictions from the climate models uh, for what is going to happen in the Central Arctic uh, for the different gas, uh, greenhouse gas emission scenarios. We have just never been there with a modern resource icebreaker in winter, and we lack even the most fundamental data from the complex climate processes that happen in the Central Arctic. Uh, and uh, therefore, our representation in our climate models uh, is not on a firm basis. With Mosaic, we want to change that. We want to provide the uh, robust scientific basis for the important political and uh, decisions and the decisions our societies now have to make to mitigate climate change. We want to be in a position that we, as exactly as precisely as possible, can tell our societies, if you decide to do that, this will be the outcome. If you decide to do that and follow another emission scenario, this will be the outcome. And then we can make informed decisions. And this is uh, why we are doing what we are doing. Overall, I just give you a very brief overview uh, about the complexity of the scientific field. Uh, we will cover pretty much everything in the Arctic climate system, starting with sea ice and snow, formation, drift, and deformation of the ice, the uh, ocean uh, circulation, uh, the small eddies in the ocean, the whole complex uh, of atmospheric clouds, aerosols, and precipitation and radiation in the atmosphere, the uh, energy and momentum fluxes between ocean, sea ice, and the atmosphere, and also uh, the uh, species fluxes uh, between these compartments, the ecosystem, the full annual cycle of the ecosystem below the ice. What are these species doing there in the dark polar night below the ice? We, we are going to look at that and find out. And, uh, then the biochemical fluxes, uh, which are produced by the ecosystem, get uh, into the ocean, through the ice, into the atmosphere. They contribute to atmospheric chemistry, aerosol production, which interact with clouds and therefore have a strong feedback on the climate system. And last but not least, uh, the interaction with the ozone layer above and the dynamical feedback from the stratosphere. So overall, we will have a fairly compact picture of the Arctic climate system in one year from now. We will certainly need another year to do a uh, most of the initial data analysis and then many years to come to work with the data, uh, but that will lead to a breakthrough in, in our understanding of the Arctic climate. And uh, with that, 
Matthew is really going to uh, say some more words about the importance of looking at the coupled Arctic climate system. Yeah, thanks, Marcus. Um, it's been a long path here, and it's really exciting to finally be getting to this point. Um, I did want to start with a few words just about the international nature of what we're doing here. It's really extraordinary to see the community come together uh, to address our, our shared scientific objectives. Um, like Marcus said, 19 nations coming together. That's really remarkable in, in this day and age. And we really are uh, organized under a shared vision. And that uh, itself is extraordinary as well. Um, and I do want to acknowledge Klaus Detloff as well, who's sitting in the back there. Um, Klaus and I have worked for many years to, to help shepherd along this process. Um, but it's gone through so many phases. The International Arctic Science Committee has been really uh, crucial in that, to bring that international community together around a number of workshops to design our science. Um, and our science really is cross-cutting. It's, it's interdisciplinary. And that's one thing that's very distinctive about Mosaic, is we do cut across the whole system. Uh, and, and I think that's really important in uh, our current state of, of being, because we're developing models that are trying to represent the changing global system, and we have to understand how these processes inter interact across the system, from the atmosphere, through the ice, through the ocean, in the physics, in the chemistry, in the biology. So this is really important, and we've uh, used this perspective as we've developed the whole mosaic concept. There's a few other things that really make mosaic distinctive uh, in the science. This full year aspect is very important. So often we go to the Arctic, and it's easy to be there for a couple months. But in this case, we're going to be there for a full year to understand the interseasonal linkages that are important for driving things like the changing sea ice. We must understand how each season talks to each other across that time and space. Uh, another part of Mosaic that's really distinctive uh, is we're looking at spatial variability. This, again, is extremely important for us to understand what we're looking at and how we reflect that into our models, because our models have to represent the whole Arctic and the whole globe. So we're attempting to do that, and we have a really good design, I think, to, to go after understanding the spatial variability in the system. There's going to be a lot of firsts. Mosaic is distinctive in that regard. So many measurements that we've never really had in the Central Arctic before that we need to learn about, that we need to, to use that information to under, underlie our models that we're developing. So this is really important as well. And I also want to emphasize, and I think this is perfectly embodied in uh, the relationship between Klaus and myself. Klaus is a modeler, I'm an observer, and from the very beginning we've been using this relationship between our modeling needs and our observing abilities as we've designed the experiment from the ground up. That's a really important thing because so often that doesn't happen in science, but here it has in, in a, very, uh, a very good way, I think, that has led to a, a nice design that I think will be extremely effective for what we're trying to accomplish. So with that, I just want to say I'm, I'm super excited to see all this finally coming together. It's been a lot of work for a lot of people in a lot of countries. Um, I really want to thank Marcus and Avi for the space that they've provided to allow this international collaboration to happen. Um, we've had uh, you know, many weeks now here at, uh, preparing, packing everything on a ship. Uh, it's just so exciting to look across that ship as everybody is busily preparing uh, to, to leave for this adventure. And finally, we get to go. So um, I'm super excited about that. Uh, and really happy to work with the, the rest of our team to, to make this happen, uh, to ultimately lead to a huge successful campaign for Mosaic. And I will hand off to Pauline. Thank you, Matt. Um, the first time I heard about Mosaic was in 2014 in Helsinki, when uh, Matthew Shoup introduced the idea to the Marine Working Group where I am representing Sweden, the Marine Working Group of IESC. Um, I have been on Arctic expeditions before, and I've been standing on the geographical North Pole twice. But when I heard about Mosaic, I instantly felt, yes, this is it. And I started to dream about the wonderful scientific results that would, could be obtained during a full seasonal cycle. Most of what we would discover would be totally novel. This is the highest professional fulfillment a scientist can achieve. Now, more than five years later, after dreaming, research applications, planning, and packing a ton, literally, of equipment and consumables, 
I will now be able to participate in the Mosaic core program and I will run two projects within the ecosystem group. One Swedish financed project and one project on fish financed by the European Union. The Central Arctic Ocean comprises the deep basins outside the continental shelves and outside the exclusive economic zones of the coastal countries. Its size is 3.3 square kilometers, an area larger than the Mediterranean Sea. And its biodiversity, food web and ecosystem functioning are largely unexplored. This is, for example, illustrated by the fact that nobody knows which fish species live in the water column of this huge area. Although the Central Arctic Ocean appears as a large untouched wilderness, it is changing incredibly fast as a result of climate change. Today, our knowledge of the biology and biochemistry of the Central Arctic Ocean contains, consists mainly of late summer snapshots and a lot of educated guessing. Mosaic will be a scientific milestone in our understanding of the functioning of the marine ice-covered ecosystem in winter and provide a baseline for future studies. It is changing from a permanently ice-covered deep ocean to a seasonally ice-covered ocean with severe ice melt in summer. During Mosaic, we will discover how biodiversity, productivity, budgets of matter and greenhouse gases, chemical interactions, and the marine food web respond to the melting of the ice. While doing this, we, will, we also expect to discover new species, new ecological functions that are fully adapted to life in this extreme environment. We, as marine, Arctic scientists are extremely happy about this fantastic opportunity and eager to start with Mosaic. We look forward to the intensive international cooperation within the Mosaic core program as well as within the various research projects. The interdisciplinarity of Mosaic, that we look at the same ecosystem with the eyes of physicists, chemists and biologists will inspire us and take us further than any discipline can do alone. From my experience, I know that the coming interactions with international colleagues with different backgrounds will enrich both my scientific and personal life. Finally, from the biological side, we will not study the whole food web in detail. We will not sample polar bears, but we will <coughs> of course, record how many polar bears we observe. Otherwise, we leave them alone. And I sincerely hope that we, they will leave us alone as well. Thank you. Uh, now I leave my, the word to the next speaker, Vladimir Sokolov. Thank you. Uh, I, will speak, uh, in I will speak in Russian and and uh, help me. Для нас очень символично, что этот большущий, грандиозный эксперимент начинается в Тромсе, откуда Фрам в свое время вышел свой грандиозный рейс и начал первое исследование Арктического океана. For us, it's very symbolic that uh, this uh, great expedition is going to start from Tromsø, from where back then uh, the Fram was departing for this first Arctic uh, expedition. К этому проекту мы шли очень давно. В 2006 году профессор Клаус Детлов приехал в Арктический институт Санкт-Петербург. И после этого первый германский ученый работал на наших дрейфующих станциях. So we have taken a long way from 2006 when Klaus Detloff was visiting us in St. Petersburg in our institute and uh, sent one colleague to one of our drifting stations. 
В 2011 году зародилась программа «Мозаик», которая активно развивалась и вот достигла своего фазы начала активного развития. And then from 2011 on, the project Mosaic has been developing and is now entering a very active phase. Российские ученые будут участвовать в работах на Полуштерна в течение всего периода и будут заниматься с нашей точки зрения одним из важнейших аспектов, которые характеризуют климатическую среду Арктики, это морской лед. And uh, Russian scientists will be participating on during the whole uh, period of Mosaic with uh, one of the very important topics, which is considered sea ice. На протяжении всего эксперимента Российский Арктический Институт будет поддерживать проект, используя свои базы в Арктике и в первую очередь базу на Северной Земле, где будут вестись комплексные наблюдения. И одновременно создана сеть баз для авиационной поддержки проекта Мозаик в высоких природах Арктики. And our institute is going to support the Mosaic project during its whole phase, also uh, with the support from its uh, Arctic base on Siberia Zimlia, and uh, there's uh, support from the logistical side. So there's fuel bases uh, deployed for logistical uh, support. Ну, а сегодня рядом с Полуштерном стоит наше научно-экспедиционное судно «Академик Федоров», которое вместе с коллегами из многих стран уйдет параллельно с Полуштерном в высокие широты Арктики и будет поддерживать его на всем первом этапе его работ до постановки его в длительный дрейф. And our expedition research vessel is laying next to Polarstein in the port of Tromsø, Akademik Fyodorov, and this vessel will um, um, accompany Polarstein during the first phase of the experiment until the uh, start of the drifting. Я уверен, что этот грандиозный проект удастся и будет очень интересным, но мы понимаем, что у них впереди очень много сложностей. We are sure that this um, project will be very successful, but of course we also see that there's a lot of difficult moments ahead of us. Мне хочется пожелать всей экспедиции, капитану судна Полорштерн, экипажу успехов в этой очень сложной и непредсказуемой работе. And I would like to wish success to all participants of the expedition and of course to the Captain uh, Schwarze of the Polarstern and uh, hope that everything will be just fine. Вот. Что касается России, то она строит специализированное судно, которое, так же как и Polarstern, должно в 2021 году войти в арктические льды и на протяжении 30 лет вести там наблюдение периодически, как челнок, возвращаясь в море Лаптих, откуда он будет начинать свое движение. And uh, Russian, Russia from its side is uh, um, building a uh, drifting platform which will be in the Arctic ice just as Polarstern for the next year, so it will be ready in 2021. And from then on, it will be uh, during the next 30 years, be drifting through the Arctic Ocean and, uh, of course, um, periodi periodically returning to the Lapta Sea where the work will start. Please, next speaker, Captain Research uh, Icebreaker, Polar Stern, Stefan Schwarze. Yeah, um, I want to make a short statement um, about my ship, the Polar Stern. She's uh, an old but beautiful lady and she's strong, really strong. And um, the technique on board, especially in the key functions, uh, is state of the art. Um, she, the technique is well maintained and has proven itself for decades. On and at the ship, we made a lot of modifications during the last uh, long dockyard time uh, to install the different scientific gears and to minimize the ship's influence uh, to the narrow environment. All fuel tanks are full. 
the provision stores also. The scientific equipment is loaded and lashed. The crew and the scientists are motivated, experienced, and the, especially the crew made extra training in survival techniques. I'm involved in the planning since yeah, more than a year, and you can believe me, I'm really happy that it starts now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Captain Schwarze, for this final statement. We will now take questions, but at this point, let me also thank and introduce to you Dr. Anne Morgenstern, scientist at the Alfred Wegener Institute, and here today um, to act as interpreter for Dr. Sokolov. Um, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand, and my colleagues will be providing you with a microphone. Before you ask your question, please state your name, your affiliation or the organization you work for and also the panelists you would like to address. Was this a question over there? So first of all, I'm Jon Börerbeck from the Resource Council of Norway. So I, I have uh, another uh, uh, question, but my first question would be, when Fleet of Nansen was sailing over uh, the uh, Polar Ocean 126 years ago, their main problem was ridging. The, it, it nearly, uh, uh, you know, could, could have damaged the ship. I guess your problem this time will not be probably ridging, but it will be open ice and ice flows. Can you comment on that? Yes, uh, of course. Um, the uh, part of the reason is that our ship is much stronger than uh, Nansen's ship uh, and, and we know how it behaves in the ice. But the more relevant part is uh, that the ice nowadays is very, very different from the ice during Nansen's times. If you read his uh, books, his reports from the expedition, actually I, I recommend it, it's a great reading. Um, the dynamics of the ridging process, the dynamics of the uh, ice pressure um, he describes are of a scale that we nowadays no longer see in the Arctic. The ice was much thicker during those times, the pressure was much higher during those times because of the thicker ice and he described uh, pressure ridges 7-8 meters high which we nowadays uh, can't find there So uh, just because the ice is so much thinner. I think he also uh, spoke about temperatures below minus 50, below minus 55 degrees Celsius, we no longer see those. So it, it, it's a dramatic sign of change in the Arctic. My name is Bernd Fuchs, I'm weatherman from German uh, RTL television. And I wanted so many nations, 19 nations, working together on this project. And I think it's a beautiful sign for that climate change has no book, knows no borders. We all have to work together. So how is your experience that the nations come together and really focused on these uh, problems in our future? It is. It has been fantastic to see how well it works. We know there are nations which uh, have uh, individual interests in the Arctic. Not all of them are in line. Sometimes uh, uh, there are controversies and uh, in the political, geopolitical domain, uh, I think uh, things are more difficult. But it doesn't affect our science at all. We do have the common scientific goals to understand the Arctic climate system. And that unifies uh, everybody in the consortium. You don't even feel the borders between the nations. And that's fascinating to see. Our foreign minister, Heiko Maas, mentioned in a speech in the UN Security Council, our expedition as an example how he thinks, how he thinks, and uh, speaking for Germany, how Germany thinks uh, the nations should collaborate and work together on resolving uh, issues in the Arctic, like the scientists on this little research vessel that will drift through the Arctic, they, these are his words. So uh, there are interesting uh, aspects and we would like to see uh, our approach to uh, propagate into other areas. I have a question online from Armi, who is a Finnish journalist uh, for Marcus Rex. What do you wish to learn personally from the expedition and what do you fear the most? Um, 
there is no fear. Fear is not a good uh, basis for a good and strategic uh, action. So we have concerns, we have good risk analysis, and we have minimized all the risks. We will be isolated, we will be far away uh, from, from help. Uh, that is one of the uh, challenges of the expedition. Uh, we need to be able to deal with all uh, problems, even including medical problems on board, because it may take a long time to get help. Uh, the other challenge is that uh, much of our work is going to take place on a very dynamic surface, that ice. It looks very uh, beautiful and static when you look at pictures, but uh, it's not static at all. It's moved by the winds and the currents, so uh, we get these huge pressure ridges. We sometimes get needs in the ice. It's not a stable surface, and people can end, uh, could end up in the oven, and we have to make plans for that. The third is uh, we are doing our research in the uh, 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 habitat of the polar bear, and uh, of course we have a very sophisticated polar bear protection plan in place. Any other questions? No? Last chance, there is another question. So I, I actually wanted to comment a little bit, if it's allowed. <laughs> So first of all, thank you. I think it's uh, once again a uh, reason to give huge credit to especially the, Al the Alfred Wegener Institute for Für Polar und Meeresforschung uh, and of course the German government to, to uh, make this uh, such a huge event, unique event uh, possible. And especially at a time where we see that the Arctic is heating, not maybe uh, uh, twice the global average, but maybe three times and, uh, or four times several places and where you see that the polar ocean and, it, and the sea ice is melting much much faster than any model is actually able to to to, uh, to show uh, so I, uh, when when this uh, expedition was started to planning I, I really am grateful on behalf of also the research council of Norway that you have enabled uh, this international uh, community uh, to join the expedition so we at, uh, in Norway at the RCN, we have funded three projects uh, participating on several legs. And I know that there are many other Norwegian scientists also joining, uh, brought into the different uh, teams. And I think it's, uh, and together with the international community, this is really, uh, will be extremely exciting. And I think also not only because the uh, Arctic climate system with the biology and the ecosystems are not well known, but also because uh, they can, uh, it has uh, influ influence on the global uh, climate system too. So, so by that, I will just wish very uh, uh, good luck with this expedition and, and we will all follow all your live streams if you have and, uh, and also with the information from the, from the expedition. And of course, also thanks to, the, to those that uh, supported with, uh, for example, the Russian icebreakers and things like that. So good luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, my colleague Katie Human will read out another question from remote. Yes, this is just a follow-up from Finland again. Um, could Dr. Rex please answer the first question? What does he wish to learn personally the most? <laughs> okay, I uh, forgot to answer that one. Um, my goal is to provide more robust scientific basis for the uh, political decisions, the uh, decisions in our societies uh, that we have to take in all our countries. And that means more robust climate projections. Uh, we need a better representation of the Arctic-specific key climate processes that are at work at the Arctic. These feedback loops, these interactions between the different compartments of the Arctic climate system, atmosphere, ocean, sea ice, uh, ecosystem, and biogeochemistry, that uh, together result in that very strong warming. And as you pointed out, it's uh, locally even much higher than uh, uh, twice as high as uh, the rest of the world. And in winter, it's <coughs> even far larger than twice as large as the rest of, in the rest of the world. And so my personal goal is to get a better basis, uh, better uh, climate predictions for the Arctic. And of course, that's the end of a long chain of science and all the individual steps we have to take in between. Any other question? So it seems everyone is waiting for the next part of the press conference. And it's almost two o'clock, so um, 
thank you all for your attention and for your very interesting questions. Now there will be an opportunity to speak to the panelists as well as to the guests. Don't forget about the guests, please. Um, you can have the conversations in here in this room or in one of those two rooms um, on your left side. Um, if you need it to be a bit more quiet. Um, please note that we will close this event at three o'clock and the media team of the Alfred Wegener Institute will also be here at your service if you need any ad assistance. And finally, um, I would like to remind you of another important event taking place later today. If you applied to attend the official farewell event, um, we are delighted to welcome you at Breivika Harbor at five o'clock. Um, the event will be right in front of Polarstern, so you can't miss it. Um, to get there, you are welcome to use our bus transfer. And the bus transfer will leave in front of the Clarion Hotel, The Edge. You know it, it's just around the corner. Um, at 4.15 and again at 4.45. So there are two bus shuttles, one at 4.15 and one at 4.45. We hope to see you there. Um, have a great day and take care. Katharina, do you want to announce uh, our follow uh, Mosaic website so that people can follow us? Uh, oh yeah, that's true. So we have a um, newly relaunched website for Mosaic, which is um, www.mosaic-expedition.org. And we also have a um, so-called web app on which you can follow us kind of live. And the URL is follow.org mosaic-expedition.org and you can have a look. Um, I think it looks pretty nice. You can have a look at the ship, at the temperature, at uh, the environment and at what's going on on the ice flow. And you will see a logbook with updates taken and um, published every day, including pictures. Yeah, thank you.